Hello, and welcome to the latest installment of the ARIS Innovator Demo Series. We're going to talk this morning about multilingual and localization. A quick note about the demo series. It runs for 30 minutes and features all demo with no sales pitch. Twice a month, typically biweekly, we show you a different capability of the ARIS platform. Once the demo series is complete, you can always go to our website, www.aris.com slash demo series to view the past demo as well as any upcoming demos. We have on the line today Rolf Laudenbach, Director of Customer Solutions. Rolf, take it away. All right. Good morning and good afternoon for the ones who are in my time zone. Today uh, I'm going to walk you through a few of the key things in multi-language setup and uh, localization in the Innovator uh, platform. So the, the main topics that I'm going to cover, um, briefly listed here, so um, most importantly, how to get language packs uh, installed, uh, what to do to have your browser in a, in a second language, export language text, and then, of course, when you are using uh, the Eros Innovator in a multi-language uh, environment, how to enter multi-language text and where this all uh, is represented in the UI. All right, uh, like Nicole said, though, this is demo only, so I'm going to switch to demo mode right away. What I'm going to do is log in to the errors system that I have prepared for that, uh, and I'm actually logging on um, as an administrator, having the English setting still turned on. I'm located in the uh, German office uh, of Aris, so I'm going to run through the language pack installation for a German language, which, of course, for all other languages will be um, similar or identical. Uh, to see how many languages are actually installed in your Aris Innovator platform, you need to go to administration and localization, and you see the languages entry. And what you'll see here is that I have actually staged this demo a little bit. So I've I've run through one step of the language pack installation already preparing the, the, the German language uh, because installing this step takes a few minutes and I didn't want to take that time. But let's just uh, then go step by step um, what that means. To prepare your system for multi-language setup, you need to go to the the server. First of all, actually, you need to download a language pack uh, either from our projects page or ask support uh, to send you any of the language packs that are available. We have language packs in the main languages uh, available, um, German, French, um, Japanese, Chinese, uh, Spanish, and many more. But let's just walk through what, what that means. So usually the language pack actually is distributed as zip file. So once you've downloaded the zip file, of course, you um, extracted um, somewhere, probably on the server, but um, actually the language tools would actually, would also be capable of running remote. I have this uh, run, uh, installed on my server at the moment. And to show you the contents uh, of that language pack, if you open this up, you see uh, most importantly the readme file, and then a few directories I'm going to uh, walk through quickly. So the readme file obviously is some instructions on, on how to do um, the language pack setup. I'm not going to read through all of that, but this is an important thing. So it uh, actually explains all the steps uh, on what you need to prepare. And then um, step three actually shows the three sub-steps to do the actual install of the language pack. Most importantly, uh, as it says all the way up here, you need to uh, modify the config file, which is this one. Um, in order to be able to connect exactly to your system. This is how it's de delivered by default. So I'm not using the Innovator Solutions database. So I'm going to have to change that to my database that I have in use in both ends. And I think everything else, I'm just using a default setting. Obviously, if you have different login passwords for uh, database user and root user, you have to correct this. Uh, let me just uh, make sure that I am using the right URL. Uh, well, no, this is not the one. Service pack 11, sorry. Um, yes, I'm using the right one. So this should be fine for running the first step 
But like I said, the very first batch file I've already done because it takes a few minutes. The second step would be to restart uh, the web server. In some, uh, on some systems, this, this may actually not run, uh, just doing nothing. Uh, what this is equivalent to is, and you can use this as an alternate method, is to actually stop the web server that Avaris is running on. Uh, so to make sure everything, everybody's disconnected from the database as we import uh, the, the labels of that uh, language pack. So I'm just doing this from this side. So the only step left for me now is actually to run through the export command. Um, well, actually, there are two steps. So this is, let me explain that. So the import command will take uh, XML files that are distributed with the language pack uh, that, if you want to take some time and analyze, will, uh, will transport all the translations of that language. So just to give you an example, if I take a more um, field field is form fields probably the easiest. Um, this is straightforward XML format and it will show you the English text and then the, the text in the language that, that is distributed. In this case, I'm already showing something that, that has a missing translation, which could be the case in some language packs uh, that it wasn't translated because the English word is, is, is fine in this case. So that, that, that is something that can happen. Anyhow, uh, the, the second part of the language pack is actually the code tree which also contains a few elements uh, uh, where XML is distributed and it's actually loaded into the UI. Typically, these are error messages that are uh, rendered client-side and all of these. So normally, uh, it actually adds directories called XML.de, in my case for German, or multiple ones in all the different language packs. So uh, going in that, you see a couple of XML files with which also contain uh, labels that uh, are to be translated, so they are actually rendered on the UI. All right, but uh, let's not do the details here and then run through the installation. So like I said, uh, all I need to do is just um, run this batch file and it uh, executes the language tools that are distributed with the language pack that will read the XML files uh, that I just explained. Uh, this also takes a little bit, but not as long, so I'm done already. Um, what this has done is, let me have a look. Um, I'm still logging on as uh, admin and still using the uh, English setting um, of the browser. So going back into the system will actually not show a lot of different behaviors. So I'm still seeing all of that. The only thing that may be different is that the data model was extended to in all cases where there are multi-language labels modeled to actually take uh, the, the different languages as, as translations. And the language pack is actually uploading these labels into the database, the data model, so to speak, in the RS database. So um, I'll take part for an example and I'll continue uh, doing some experiments uh, later on on this. So open up part will actually show you that uh, the way we've implemented that your singular label for the item type, the plural label, already is modeled as a multi-language label. And to get to the multi-language text entry data, you can see you know, this is parts uh, in English and Thailand in, in German. And it continues on uh, with the properties. So any of the properties that are down here are then also translated by importing the language tag, uh, pack. Um, when you start doing your customizations to existing solutions or adding new solutions, of course, in the multi-language environment, you are now responsible for adding these translations. But I'll get to this uh, um, in, in a later step of this demo. Let's just see the effect. Uh, so the effect is um, that if you log on with a browser that has a different language setting, in this case, the German language setting, uh, Ares Innovator will render that uh, the, the UI in that language. To simulate or, or set set up this different language, what you need to do is actually go to, I'm using Chrome here, but this is actually available in all the other browsers. I need to go to the language settings of my browser, which normally if you're in a global installation, uh, uh, you, your local installation of the browser would be in that language already. So there's actually nothing you need to do. Uh, but if you want to demo this, you go to the language tab. 
Um, and you can see I have installed German and English, and uh, English being my primary language. So in Google, what I need to do is just make uh, German the primary language uh, of that browser, and uh, then just close the browser altogether. At that point, it's actually important that you close all instances of the Chrome browser, so the new setup of that uh, browser can, can uh, be installed. Logging back in. shows the uh, logging screen and now I expect to see a change and yes you can see that so uh, con contents has changed to Inhalte which is the German translation you can see the menu uh, up here that is now all available in, in, in German with the German translations or in other languages if you have that um, if I go down to the table of contents, you can see uh, design is, is, is this, and the parts that we showed briefly in the admin would be this, and it goes on and on and on. There are some cases uh, that, um, well, the other way around, um, the, the, the standard language pack that is distributed will cover all core, um, and the, the core solutions as, are just, as they're distributed with the standard installation, which will be uh, program management and, um, and product engineering. So, of course, you see the translations for the program management parts. You see it for the documents and the CAD. But if you have, and in my case I have, that if you have additional applications installed, like quality management, uh, requirements management, or technical documentation, some of these translations may not be available. Um, in this case, there are extended translation uh, language packs available. You need to co contact uh, support to get you some, some additional translations uh, of, of these areas. Uh, of course, again, like I said, if they are, these are your own customizations, you uh, have to add the translations on your own and add it to the data model, maintain it with your uh, solution. What I want to do now is actually make a little change to demo a little bit. Um, I'm back on the server now and uh, I'm logging on with the browser here. Um, in this case I'm using IE and uh, this one is actually set to English so I'm back in English uh, doing all my admin work um, and let's just um, go to item type hard again and explain a little bit on how uh, you would have to maintain uh, multi-languages in your own customizations. So um, opening part again, uh, explained this already. Uh, let's just assume that uh, we are on the properties once they show up. We want to actually change uh, the wording for description. And let's just say uh, we want to be more precise in English as well, so we call this a part description, and in German we would can call this. Uh, oops. We would call this something like this. Uh, likewise, if uh, that is actually to be shown on the um, corresponding uh, form, you would have to go to the form fields and make the the modifications there as well. So on the form fields, it's um, Actually, anywhere where it's labels, there's uh, label definitions on your life cycle states, there's label definitions on your workflow activities. In many cases, uh, any any time where you see a multi-language setup, you either have an area for the labels where you can set the multiple labels, or on the field you see this um, blue button with the three dots that allows you to actually enter uh, the different languages. So uh, no, this is not the one I wanted to use. I wanted to switch to description. And here already you can see it, it, it's called long description already, but we'll call it long part description, and then we call it um, something like this. So that's that's the work you have to do, and obviously for any of your new uh, properties that you add, you have to uh, extend this, uh, and on your new item types, your new elements in your customizations, you have to do that. Um, and you, Innovator Admin is one way of doing that. I'll show the process how to continue with these extensions uh, a little later. Let's uh, 
stick with uh, the part again and let's do one more thing. Let's just add another attribute as part of the customization. And I'm going to show, going to show something interesting now because uh, current right now as we install the, the language pack, uh, the only impact it had is really on the UI. So labels that somehow show on the UI. But errors uh, with the multi-language data model is also capable of actually uh, maintaining, managing uh, multi-language text that is input in a multi-language field. So usually this is freeform text. And let's just uh, uh, assume that uh, in addition to the standard name, we're going to model something that's called the multi-language name. And of course, for the UI, we'll give this a uh, uh, two labels, so we call it um, multi-language, multilinguale. Um, here we go, and we call this here multi-language name. And um, we make this, and this is the important part, we make this data field now not just a standard text, but we make it a multi-language string, in which case we still have to identify the length of the string. Let's say we allow maximum 255 characters, uh, make this uh, maybe um, 300 pixels wide for the column, and put this all the way to the end. Um, so now I'm adding a field to the data model that is actually maintained as one field, but if I enter text, I can enter it in all the languages that I have registered in the system. Um, likewise, I have to, if I wanted to make this available for input on the form, I have to modify the form again. Almost could have let it open. All right, so we're back on the parts form. So, now we go. Just standard procedure, we're um, adding the new property, which is unused here, multilingual name. Um, this shows up here, and um, this could be now a standard text, for example, and let's just say we make this a, a little wider, not this wide, um, maybe even a little wider. And uh, the point now is that we have to make the field type on the form also match the multi-language capability. So we have to make it a multi-language field. And now you can see automatically you get the button with the three dots. So when you enter the data into the, the system, you can actually um, get to the, the multi-language uh, data input for that text. Um, I'm saving this. So, the main areas where labels actually are exposed to the user is, is, is UI labels uh, for menus, toolbars, and so forth. Then it's the multi-language text input like I showed. And the other one is actually in pick lists. So imagine you have some pick lists. Um, if you use the standard lists, we can use one of those. If you add one of your lists, uh, new lists that you're adding to the system in a multi-language environment, you have to now also think about um, translations at some point, you know, not necessarily as you configure. Normally, uh, the good practice is to model everything in one language and then take uh, certain iterations where you then take some time and effort to do the translations uh, before you release and then you go in, in these iterations. And uh, there are some tools I'm going to, going to address a little bit uh, if we have some time uh, later on. So I'm, I'm using the make by list, which is a standard list um, everybody probably knows. Uh, on the part. So the thing is that when you model pick lists, as you know, you can model uh, the value and the label. And while you were in a single language environment, that wasn't really that critical. You just made the label something and it showed up. When you're in a multi-language environment, any of the labels now has multiple entries. So you can see you have the translations of the, the values that are in the pick list, which then means when you uh, enter the UI in a different language, and you, you hit the pick list, you will see the translated, the localized text, which is what users would expect, so they are not confused um, and know what they have to do. Let's uh, try this out. Uh, so this is actually the part that's on the server. Let's go back to the to the part that is, uh, no, I probably have to log out because I'm, I've changed the configuration. Let's log back in. Remember, this is Chrome. This is the one that I have set to uh, German for the UI. So what we can see going to the parts, we can see 
that this multi-language text field, multi-language name field, is actually now showing with the German label, of course, because I'm I'm, I'm using this in German, uh, and I can search for parts, of course. Uh, let's just take uh, any of the preliminary parts that I can edit. Now I'm editing with the form, and here's actually another effect, <laughs> interesting effect that you may run into in a multi-language environment. When you do your forms layout, and you know that you're going to be multi-language, uh, try to use some larger spacing between the fields because in some languages the tr translated labels for the, for, for the fields can actually be 30% or so longer. This is kind of a, a good practice. And in this case, we're overrunning a field, so we would have to re-lay out uh, the, the form layout, which is a very common thing in multi-language setup that you have to fix. Down here, we can see uh, the multi-language field. And what I can now do is I can enter some text that I'm going to use uh, in multiple languages. Let me just think of something. Um, yeah, I'm just, just using this. I'm just using um, Keep it simple. I'm used just using the, the, the word for part. Um, the effect uh, that I wanted to show is not only can we model can we model that multi-language field, as you can see here, now it shows up in the German language, but we can also search in that local language for that for that uh, field. So we can basically just, in my native language, uh, hit the search and I'll get, I'll get the hit. And if I did the same thing in, in my English environment, I can search for part and I will see it. So this is really the effect. And uh, while we are at parts, and I explained the, the whole thing with the pick lists, uh, remember the make by pick list. Uh, this is how it's shown in the English setup. And if I do the same in my German setup, I see the translated text. Okay, so this is actually kind of the effect on, on, on language packs. Now, the thing is, what do you do when when you actually added and modified the, 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 the labels in your language and you now want to actually uh, transport this or take this out of the system? Uh, like I explained before, you do that in cycles, not immediately when you do the customizing, but when you're ready to actually get the, the language out or in, uh, you, get, you can use another command of that language tool that's distributed with the language pack. Um, you may have noticed uh, I clicked the, on the import term. There's also an export version of that. Uh, let me explain a little bit what that does. So remember, this is the XML that was used for the import, and there is a configuration what it will read. And likewise, there is a configuration on what types with language labels uh, configured in a data model it will have to uh, parse and then you have to actually extract from, from the system as you run the language tool. So um, what the language export command does, let me just make a backup of this so you see the effect um, quickly. So the language tool that's provided has an import and export um, option, of course, and I'm not going to save this. And if I double click on this now, it's running through the whole database with all your new labels, all your modified labels in that one language that you have identified. And it's extracting this into uh, this XML format that if you transport this to another system, you can use the language pack uh, import to actually get these labels transported to another system. But you could also, in some cases, just use that XML and check any of the translations that might be missing or do some 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 cross checking on the translations, uh, whether or not they're they're good or bad. So we should have um, like like we did. We should have a change uh, of something that's called the part description. And and this is an interesting effect because the the translation should be set here. I may not have saved it. Um, 
All right. Anyway, so so that's the process to get uh, languages out. Maybe I can show another item type. Our property is probably another one that could be, which is a rather long one that you see many, many translations. that are there. Okay, um, let me look at my little script. So uh, we're doing the text search. I showed the pick lists. This is really all I have to, I have prepared for today. And I'd like to open this for questions now. Thank you, Raul. Be sure to enter in any questions you might have into the Q&A panel after seeing that demonstration. We have a few submitted questions, so let's get into those now. Rolf, how are language packs added into the platform? Pretty much like I showed. They're imported with, with, uh, with the language pack that is distributed. If you end up doing a language pack that is not available, because really the, the architecture of multi-language setup uh, is based on, 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 on capability of Unicode. And if we don't have translations, you could create your own. So uh, you need to go to the admin setup. And if you don't have a language pack, you just add the, the new language in that uh, admin section. And then in this case, you need to extract uh, the, the, the labels of all your fields. And then you need to go through the translations either interactively uh, in, in administrator, like I, I showed, uh, or you do a first pass of the obvious translations in that XML, and then you package that up uh, for your own language pack and distribute it. Okay. Um, we're just going to take one more here. What if I find issues to a language pack? How do I handle that? Well, I think your, your first uh, step would be if, if you're a subscriber, call support, because they are uh, in the loop of all the language packs. Uh, and they would be able to help you. I would probably say that the issues that you normally see is that there may be a misspelling or a translation that you may not be happy with. So that is a, a good process to just send it to support so they can uh, track it and log it. And then we can, with, with the next iteration of the language pack, uh, update the language pack. Of course, if it's something critical, we can uh, create a, a Delta language pack that you can that you can use to just import into your setup, or you fix it on your own. And probably when you uh, get the next language pack from a download, you need to make sure that it's not overwritten. So in this case, it is actually good practice to make sure that uh, on the managed language packs that, that, that we know about uh, the changes you want to make. All right. Thank you for your questions. I apologize for any that we didn't get to today. I'm going to leave you with what is upcoming. On April 5th, we'll be going over the AERIS Flexible PLM platform. Again, you can register for any upcoming webinars and view any past webinars at www.aris.com slash demo series. We'd love for you to all join the Open Aris PLM community. We've got blogs, knowledge bases, a lot of good information, forums, community projects for you to access and contribute to when ready. Be sure to follow Aris on social. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, where we are looking to share with you community industry related news and articles, latest information on ARIS news, products, assets, and more. Finally, be sure to register for ACUS 2018 in Indianapolis, Indiana, March 20th to the 22nd. The event is less than a month away now, and we would love to see you all there and hear your feedback. ACE is the perfect opportunity to network with the PLM community, ARIS employees, partners, and more. Put your community on the fast track to its digital transformation at ACUS 2018. With that, we thank you for joining us today and look forward to having you on next time. Thank you and have a good day.